If you guys are looking to solo out your coon dog, or you're having some issues soloing out your coon dog, or you need to learn how to solo out a coon dog, this is the right video for you guys, and I, I really hope you stick around. I got a lot of good information coming up and a lot of support and advice, okay? Um, if you're just getting here, feel free to hit a like and a subscribe on the channel. Check us out. Um, if you're coming back, man, just wait around to the end of the video. I moved a shout out to the end. And uh, for you newcomers, if you guys uh, drop some comments or hit a subscribe and I can see it, I will try to get you shouted out on the channel. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the video. Uh, soloing out your coon dog. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. And, and a lot of guys... A lot of guys make the mistake, man. They always, always, they don't want to leave the house without that good dog. You know, you don't want to go to the woods. You don't want to waste a hunt uh, without tree and at least something. So you always end up taking that dog and that dog always end up getting cut behind the young dog as backup. And it always ends up being that the dog had not enough solo time. Okay, so when I, my, my biggest piece of advice to you guys is leave the other dogs at home take the, the young dog or the pup or whatever you're stolen out and take it out on its own with just you and that dog, okay? So that is number one, no help, absolutely no help, no distractions, no menacing stuff going on that's gonna get in the way of getting this dog actually uh, going, right? So a big issue that a lot of guys have when soloing out a dog that has been ran with other dogs before is that number one, they won't leave your feet. Okay, I have a whole video on, on the how to get through that process. Um, you guys can check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, number two is the dog keeps leaving and coming back, leaving and coming back, and then it just snowballs from there, not striking, not treeing, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. The whole nine yards, all the headaches on top of one another. Okay, so my, my biggest piece of advice for you guys here uh, next to leaving the dog at home is going to be lower your expectations okay lower your expectations all the way down to nothing okay we're going to treat this dog as if it is a green dog that has never been in the woods before and and we have to look at it this way because we have to have an open mind and not have a blurred thoughts so we can actually judge accurately the dog's behavior in the woods and we can give the dog actually what it needs to actually go out there by itself and get the job done solo Okay, so we're not ever going to think in our mind, last night I ran you with the other dogs and you were first strike. Last dog I ran, last night I ran you with the other dogs and you were first to the tree. You split off from the pack and you soloed up. Okay, that's how they're going to behave with dogs. They're, that's not how they're going to behave one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, because there's one big reason for this, and that is when you put a dog in the woods with other dogs, they take their cues from the other dogs. Okay, when you're in the woods with your dog by yourself and it's just you and that dog, that dog takes its cues from you. Okay, so this is going to be the big, huge gap that needs to be jumped. Okay, and, and when we're, we're judging our dog, we'll say, well, get our dog in the woods and we'll go, okay, well, he's kind of lacking in this department. He's not tracking so good. He's kind of lacking in this department. He, he's home humming on trees. Maybe he's not treeing at all. Um, and we're just going to uh, assess that process as if this dog has always been solo. And we're going to address that issue as if he's always been solo. We're not going to put the pressure of you've been with other dogs and done better than this. Because what happens when you take the dog out of the pack and you put it by itself, what that dog shows you is what it's learned from the pack. Okay, So if the dog hasn't been able to put it all the way together with the other dogs, it is our responsibility to go ahead and assess the issue and, uh, and get it addressed and fix that problem for that dog and get it fully uh, corrected and sent on its way. Okay, so that that is uh, that that's my another my second biggest piece of advice. My my third piece of advice here, as I'm going to say, is don't backtrack and, and and backslide and hunt the dog solo for a couple nights and throw it back with other dogs. No, we're like we're soloing out. That's what we're doing. Okay, so we're not like once we solo out, we're not going to put that dog with other dogs until it gets done what we need to get done. And this can be a headache. It can take longer than an actual green dog to get a dog that's been ran with other dogs to actually click a process. Sometimes they're just lickety split and there's no problem soloing out. Other times it, it's a bigger headache than if you would have just had them solo from the start. Okay, and we always have our training processes to revert back to. Okay, so if we image this dog as a green dog. When we come into an issue, we, we have a process, a training process in our brain, how we remedy these issues, and that's what we're going to revert back to. And, and we're just going to walk that dog through those processes 
and rinse and repeat them until we get what we want out of them. And, and I think that's the biggest thing that happens is guys get so disappointed, so frustrated, so fed up with a dog that does well with other dogs and then you put it in the woods by itself and it's just like, dude, have you ever even been in the woods one time, dude? Come on. Okay, so um, that that's going to be my another piece of advice is revert back to as if you were training a green dog and, and i think that is very key all right so we're going to wrap the video up there um i'm going to jump right into shout outs okay so rain wrapped x dude i'm sorry i, I really appreciate your comment uh, uh a couple of these guys i have missed and i mean i missed them by a good long time um just some settings on youtube studio weren't allowing me to see them i got that figured out and I, i've seen you guys the videos i tried to get back and comment to everybody who I have not commented to. So Rain Wrapped X, man. I, I hope you come to the coon hunting world, man. Coon hunting is one of those things, and I'll say it until forever, dude. And once you get into coon hunting, it's in your blood, man. It's in your soul. You you will absolutely love it. Anybody who goes coon hunting will just absolutely loves it, man. Um I I have some of my first memories are coon hunting with my grandpa when I was like five years old, dude. And ever since then, I have been all about it i love the sport i love training dogs i love getting in the woods i mean it's always just so much action and so much fun man even on the bad days and and one thing that i'll say to all you newcomers in there um this is what, what i preach to uh you know my kids when i'm training dogs is if you're not around for the bad days you're not going to be around for the good days so you got to tough it out when it's bad if you want to be around when it's good because the whole experience is so much more rewarding when you tough out those bad nights and you tough out those no trees and, you, and all that stuff. And then it comes around and your dog actually does something that you, you've been waiting on to do for a really long time. There's no excitement like it. Okay, so that's my, my, my uh, shout out to you, Rain Wrapped X. Um, Sean, uh, let me see here. Sean Wellman, thank you for coming in and commenting. Um, I, I actually kind of forgot, but I had a pup... Um, a long long time ago uh, that I started on squirrels um, I started them on a dead squirrel and and right within you know a week or two I rolled him right into coons it's a very good way to start them up into um, coons especially when they're a smaller pup something like that um, I would recommend if you want a straight coon dog to only use coons um, nothing wrong with a good squirrel dog I myself have never trained a, 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 a squirrel dog. I've been really thinking about putting my hand, uh, trying my hand at uh, training a uh, squirrel dog. I've really pondered this for a long time or even a, a good meat dog that would just tree anything. I think that that's going to uh, be my next little mission there is to have me a nice little meat dog and just get in the woods and night or day and have, have a good time. Um, I, I can't see why it's too much different. I mean, other than the obvious stuff like hunting at night, hunting in the day, you know, different things like that, um, different nuances, but I believe the training situation is pretty well about the same. I think the squirrels will give you a, a lot more heck of a problem than a coon because they're just so much more faster, you know, they'll slick up the dog or something like that. Um, so uh, that's just my imagination. If you guys know different about squirrel dogs or if you guys have a lot of information about training squirrel, uh, squirrel dogs, please feel free. I mean, I would love to have the information. Okay, so another one's going to be is uh, Walker Johnson. Dude, I'm sorry I missed your comment. Um, this tends to be kind of a normal thing for hounds, um, especially pups. And it's just kind of, it's just like one of those byproducts, dude. You get them when they're young like that, and you get them in the woods and stuff like that, and they, they bump that uh, deer, and, and they, they found their fun, man, they want to have fun, and they're, they're always looking for action, especially if you have a dog that's really high strung and really geared, and has a lot of drive, um, that deer pops up, man, and they're going to give in, dude, they're going to give in, but, um, the good thing about this is, is it's not too hard when they're that young to go ahead and just get them over, and, and get them, uh, onto some coon, I think um, the best thing that I would, a uh, piece of advice I'll give you is get into the, the, the live coons, get into shining and, and knocking coons down to this dog, uh, try putting him on some trees, try getting him a little bit more action, um, and maybe he will turn on a lot more hotter for the uh, for the coons. And, and this, is, this is what I did with Cash Man. I mean, I never had an issue with uh, Cash trying to run trash or anything like that. Um, Nothing that was too 
out of the ordinary for training a pup anyways. And, and it's just kind of like, um, I, I took him out, shined some coons, put him on a tree, got him going and knocked him down to him. And it was just like, I did that two or three times and it really just solidified the drive and turned it up to 11 for him. And before I started showing him the cage and stuff. So that, that's another good piece of advice there is, uh, these younger dogs that ain't seen a whole lot of coons come down out of the tree. It's really good to just go out and shine a couple. Uh, I mean, try to let them work out a little nice little short track and see if they'll tree it up anyways, you know. Um, so, the uh, next shout out is going to be Lucas Pops, okay. You had that question about the feed. I did the whole feed video. I did mention you or comment back to you. I didn't actually uh, give you a shout out, but this is your shout out, man. And if you guys want shout it out on the channel, all you got to do is leave a comment or subscribe. And if I can see your name, I will go ahead and give you a shout out. And I want to give a huge shout out to the new subscribers. Um, I ain't been able to see you guys. It's like it's like a bad uh, like a bad habit here. You, um, if you guys have your profile set to private, I cannot see who subscribed. And I really wish that I could so I could actually give you guys a shout out. Because I think you guys deserve it. Um, with that being said, you guys, I'll have some promo codes for Dogtra. Some promo codes for Teased by Joe down in the description um i will have my uh contact information if you guys want to send in clips please send in your clips i would love to see what you guys have going on and we'll get some featured on the channel um and it's going to be nothing but good stuff and, and uh good um uplifting things that i want to do with uh, your guys's clips i'm not going to get you on here and, and and you know bad talk you or something like that i'm not that kind of guy um but Thanks for stopping in and uh, keep them treated. Hope you guys can get your dog soloed out.